Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome for the first time. Um, it's been a minute since I've done an analysis video, so I'm going to do an analysis video today. We are going to do The Boy Is Mine by Ariana Grande. I love this song. I think it's a really, really good song. Sorry, I just kind of wanted to do a, a deep dive into the ins and outs of this song. I do also want to note that she has another version with Brandy and Monica, and they have a song that has the same name the boy is mine so obviously brandy and Mon uh, brandy and monica song came out way before ariana's did um obviously so she uh featured them in another version of her own the boy is mine as sort of like an ode to them i don't think the songs are similar from what i remember they're not very similar but they do both use the line and the same title the boy is mine so um i thought that was cool so that's just a quick side note but yeah, so let's just get into it. Uh, we're going to go section by section and go into the, the theory of it and anything else that I find that stands out that that makes the song great or, you know, or even critique. So I want to remind everybody that all of this sort of stuff, while it's all great and it is analysis, that it is still, it's still art and it's still, you know, my opinion as far as what I think might work or what might not work and why so yeah you know take everything with a grain of salt this is still art at the end of the day so don't don't uh you know don't get too crazy on the the meaning behind the analysis or anything like that like this is this is to get more insight into why i think it works and sounds good and is really popular so yeah without further ado um and also i'm going to be using my you can't even see it i'm going to <laughs> I'm going to be using my guitar today to kind of talk through some stuff, especially with all the theory. So we're going to start with the intro and the first verse. That's the first section we're going to do. And then we're going to go from there. How can it be you and me? Okay, so that was a quick intro and first verse. So let me let me get into the theory real quick. Let me bring my hand to dandy, my hand to dandy geeter. Um, so the chords in most of the song. In, well, in the whole song except the bridge, the chords are the same. So you can either say this is in the key of G minor or B flat major. Most of the song is in G minor, but but B flat major is the relative major key of of G minor. Um, and so you can you can do the notation either in G minor or B flat major. Technically, it's in G minor, but it might. Um, be easier for some people to just use the relative major key because uh, that's how most people learn especially the roman numeral like writing of it first chord is g minor nine or you can just do g7 or g minor so just g minor by itself you can do g minor seven or you can do g minor you can do g minor nine which i think fits the song best so this is what it sounds like on the fifth string. If you want it to sound fancier, a little bit fuller, I personally like doing this version. I don't know, it sounds sexier this way. If you play it um, with the sixth string G. So yeah, so the first chord is G minor and the second chord is C minor seven, or you can just do C minor by itself. So here is C minor or C minor seven. So start with G minor nine, go to C minor. And then you go back to that. And that's literally it. So yeah, as far as the melodic notes go, when, you, when she starts the first verse, it's, she starts on the, the fifth of the chord. So the fifth of G minor nine. Right? Okay, so she starts on singing on D, 
And she sort of meanders back and forth between the fifth and the third of the chord. Um, so G and then B flat and then D. So D and B flat, she meanders. And the, the thing to note, especially if you're writing your own music, is she uses a lot of stepwise motion to get to each chord tone. So if you're doing G minor, you're doing G, B flat, D, right? So there's a fourth in there, right? So that's the fourth of the scale of G minor. Fifth, fourth, third. So she uses that fourth quite a bit. C, fifth, 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 third, fourth, fifth. It just adds a little bit more smoothness, a little bit, yeah, just smoothness, a little more motion than just sort of sometimes a robotic feeling like third to fifth. It just feels very like you're playing an arpeggio more than, or singing an arpeggio more than you are singing a melody. Um, so yeah, that beginning is then down. And then when you get to the C minor seven, she basically uses that fifth of the G to go up just a half step. And that's the chord tone of the third for the next chord of C minor seven. So. Instead of, which would be in the chord scale of the G minor. So she just goes up a half step. And it's interesting because, you know, half steps I find are very useful for creating tension because it's, it's dissonant, you know, it's just a half step apart, right? So it creates this tension and I think it suits really well to this song because this song's like a super sexy song, right? So like it, it like it builds tension in the, the verse, in the melody of itself. So the, the notes that she uses in the first part is basically she moves it a step up roughly and meanders around the third of C minor seven and the first, which is very, you know, it's only a step up from the. Right. So again, she's using half, she's using stepwise motion to get between the first of C, right? The second to the third. Right. And then she skips on the last one. She skips the second. Yeah. So she like, it really uses stepwise motion and those specific half steps within the scale to get that tension. And it's all in, in the key of G minor. So it's, she's not even modulating or using any, any tone like notes that are not within the scale of G minor itself. So I think that's really cool. So after that, so this technically is the, f the four or the 11th chord tone of C minor seven. So she, that is, if you're going, she uses that note to transition back into G minor nine in the chord of G minor. This, this fourth that we are playing is now the seventh of G. So she's using the same, she's using notes. And this is what very important when it comes to, to, you know, improvising is like finding chord tones that are the same in each chord. So you can really transition more easily from chord to chord. It sounds very smooth. Now we're back to G minor nine. This is where she goes down into the lower notes. She's just using stepwise motion, purely going down the scale of G minor. Right. So she's starting on the fifth again of G minor, straight down the scale. She uses that half step again. So again, she's just using the half step and it builds that tension, you know, again, 
I forgot to mention earlier, if you want the Roman numerals of the chords, so G minor 9 to C minor 7 is 1 minor 9 to 4 minor 7 if you're doing it in the key of G minor. If you want to do it all in the key of B flat major, because I know that's easier for, for some, it would be 6 minor 9 to 2 minor 9 in the key of B flat. Uh, I love that bass tone too. That when that 808 comes in and hits with the kick, that that is my f that tone is so good. I love this intro, and I also like that the phrase ends with that little triangle hit as like sort of like a everything comes in to silence and then breaks into the verse. That is a probably my favorite way to transition between sections. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. I like that this verse is. You know, it's the first verse, so it's probably going to be very chill for the most part. It's probably going to be one of the more lower energy parts of the song. Uh, so it, it allows room to grow and build as far as energy. So I like I like the the sparseness of the kick and the 808 throughout this verse. And it kind of there's just this like long synth pad kind of meandering in the background while she's singing the first verse. I think it's really effective. It still hits with those really sparse 808 hits and the kick and obviously the the snare slash clap sound to keep the to keep the groove obviously. But it's it's pretty sparse besides that synth, her vocals and then that 808 and kick yes let's move on we're gonna go into the pre-chorus and then the chorus together so we're gonna listen to these two sections together um because i really want to <laughs> i mean i've already listened to the song so i really want to emphasize the transition of the pre-chorus to the chorus anyways uh, so let's go Something about him is made for Sir, I'm going to go into the theory after I do the rest of it. So first of all, the energy is already a little bit higher in the pre-chorus because she's singing higher in her range. So naturally, that does give the song more energy um, in and of itself because the, the notes are higher. So your ear just really listens in more. I really love this transition where the last bar, when she's saying that boy is and it slows down each beat. But then when she says mine on one of the bar of the chorus, it's like back to normal speed. I really, really, really like this transition because I've personally, I have not really se seen it been used very often, the, the tempo change, and then going back straight into the same tempo. I find it, it's really cool because it really catches your attention that you're, you're probably gonna go into a different section when, when it slows down. But I also think it, it emphasizes really well the word mine because it's slowing down to build up to the word mine. So when she says mine, it's really emphasizing that boy is mine. So I think that's a really cool way to to emphasize certain words and to transition to the next section. Damn, like I wish I thought to do that for a transition, <laughs> you know, um, for my own music, but... Yeah, so that, I think that's why I really, really love this song is like, honestly, that transition. Yeah, the vocals in the pre-chorus also have more reverb on it as well. So it's a little bit spacier. I think it has a little delay on it too. It's So it's it's just longer, a little more wet, as you would say, than the more dry vocals in the verse. So that also makes a good distinction between each section. So I would say the, the 808 and, and the kick are still sparse, but they are playing more often. Like there's still space in between when they hit, but there's they're definitely hitting more often than it was in the verse. Baby, come over, come over. And the backup 
vocals go over after. I don't know what notes she's singing, what chord that was. I didn't figure it, like, I didn't take the time to figure it out, but I, I freaking love that, those backing vocals. Yeah, I think it, I don't know what it is the... They made them sound super airy and super breathy. So I think it, I don't know. I think it just makes the song, like it makes it sexier. So it makes like the, the tension, it adds to the tension of the song. Whoever, whoever produced it, I think did a great job as far as production and really using sounds and tones and finding ways to really bring all of this like sex, sexy, like tension, like sexual tension, like vibe to the song as a whole. Yeah, so this first chorus is, I don't want to say low energy. It definitely has the highest energy so far, but it is, it's definitely, like there aren't any harmonies in the the main melody yet. So like she, there's just, a, I can hear there's a bunch of doubles of her singing the same melody. So it really emphasizes the melody of the chorus and like really says like, this is the chorus. And the the 808 and the kick are also riding more steadily so you can it's yeah it's just more wholesome as far as the composition and so that definitely like is a good signal like this is a chorus and like this is the strongest part but i think they're still leaving room for more energy is the best way to say it so let me get into the the theory of it so the chords are the same the chords are exactly the same it's g minor 9 and then C minor seven, and then it goes back. So we don't have to do that. So we're just going stepwise again. I really love this octave jump. And then it goes up that half step again. This half step, she loves this D to E flat. She uses a lot in this song, but it's it's so effective. And then she goes stepwise again as far as the phrasing, just up a step to hit this higher note, which she didn't hit in the previous phrase. All of it is stepwise motion. It's all within the scale of G minor. So I think it's really cool that she finds ways to use this scale to, to build tension still and not even having to like stray outside of the the scale itself. Same phrasing. And then that boy is mine. This is an A, which is the six or the 13th of C minor. And while it's still in the scale, because it's the sixth degree of C minor, C minor, the C minor seven chord, it's technically not like your standard chord tone. It's it's uh, extended extended chord tones. So the sixth also adds more tension. That's like using the G minor nine instead of just doing the G minor seven. It's like. I don't know, it adds a little, it's a little spicier when you add the 9th or the 11th or the 13th. So I think it was cool to start that it's not the, the melody for the chorus is not starting on like the root note of the chord or the third or the fifth of the chord. It's starting on the sixth. And then it goes to G minor nine. You kind of, when you get to G minor nine, you kind of hit that when she goes down to mine it's it's going from the ninth or this the second of g minor down to the root so she does hit the root but she doesn't stay on it she always goes back to that t the note with more tension which is in this case for g minor the ninth now and then when she does and then when it switches to c minor seven she's still playing the same melody this is going from the 6th of C minor 7, so the 13th, to the 5th of the chord, which is G. And this is just the octave of C, so the root. Boy is mine, I can't believe my mind. Right. Um, 
I don't feel like singing it up an octave, so please pardon that. She's going from the seventh of this chord, so C minor seven. She's going from B, B flat, I mean, sorry, B flat to A. Right. I can't believe. And then goes back to this, this D to E flat. She always hits that which I think is really cool to have and like carry throughout the song. So and that's the end of the chorus. So it's it's pretty like it's like three or four notes total, but I think the way she uses them is really effective. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's basically the theory for the song. When we get to the bridge, it'll be a obviously different um and i'll explain that then but let's get into the next verse please do the same what i planned for probably wouldn't get the time of my life but there's gotta be a reason why my girls they always come to in the sticky situation say it's fine Yeah, so the chords are the same. The theory is the same. Um, the beginning of the melody, she she does a little bit more uh, movement. Da, 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 da. Yeah, she didn't do that before. She just goes da, 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 da. So I like that she adds a little more movement and she really keeps it bouncy still the way she sings it. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I like that she uses articulation throughout. She emphasizes words by and phrases by using legato for a select few notes and then goes back to the staccato. Right. So I think she she picks certain notes to really elongate and emphasize both in notes usually she goes up a half step for that and also in the articulation and then she goes back to the staccato i think that's a really really effective and really cool way to make the melodies not only more interesting to emphasize words in the phrase but also i think it really i think it lends well to the song as well, the like the sexiness of the song, because like the staccato, it's like almost she's like she's like dancing on the notes across the notes, bouncing on them. And then she chooses one note to really elongate and make super smooth and then goes back to it. It's like I don't know. It's like it's hard to describe. But it's like almost like teasing, but like through music, if that makes sense. I know I'm like kind of a nerd, but it's like it to me, it's very fascinating to see how how much like something as small as singing a note more staccato or accenting a certain note really makes a difference in the song as a whole or the phrase as a whole. As far as the energy of this second verse, it's higher than the first verse, but it's still a verse. Like you can still tell it's a verse. The kick, the 808 is, is pretty sparse again, but there are more backing vocals. She's doubling more, more words and phrases. And there's, there's a little bit more movement in the background as well. So you really can, you can really tell this is a verse, but it's still a little bit higher energy than the first verse, especially because of the backing vocals and the instrumentation in the background. Let's go to the next pre-chorus and chorus. Something about him is made for somebody like me. Baby, come over, come over. Oh, God knows I'm trying, but that's just no use Yeah, so this pre-chorus and chorus are roughly the same. There's not too much I would add. Um, she changes the melody a teeny bit in the pre-chorus. In the first verse, I think, or in the first pre-chorus, she's like, denying. And now she's like, denying. So she adds those uh, uh, slightly higher. She goes slightly higher for that instead of just staying denying. So that's cool. Just adds a little bit more movement, a little more interest. So it's not completely the same as the first 
pre-chorus and chorus. And then we're gonna go into the bridge. And I know it's something meant to be in. I had to call the accountability for all these years. Promise you I'm not usually like this shit is like losing me. Okay, so. Okay, let's get into the theory of of the bridge. I think of this. I think of this as she moves to the relative major. So instead of it being G minor, she moves it to B major. It's the same key, right? G minor is just the sixth chord in B flat major. So the chords she uses, C minor seven, D minor seven, E flat major seven. And then she does it again. And then goes to D seven as the last chord before the chorus. Or you could play it up here. If you are in the key of B flat major, then this would be two minor seven, three minor seven, and four major seven. And then when you get to this D seven, this is a, a borrowed chord. And it's very common to use using, I've talked about it before, but using the, the five seven to get back to the original chord. So D7 does not exist within B flat major technically, right? We saw before you do C minor seven, D minor seven, not D7, right? But when you're going to, when you're in the key of G, what's the fifth of G? That would be D. So that's how you get the D7. It's a borrowed five seven of the key of G. I think it's a good transition straight into, it helps you get back into like, we're going back to the minor key. And um, I'm not gonna go into the, the melody of, of this part really. There's a lot of stepwise motion. It's mostly going up and down the scale of B flat major, or you can say G minor, but you can really tell it's switched to B flat major because she uses the chord tones of, of B flat major, of uh, B flat D and F. And then you can tell when she's, going back into the minor key. She's staying within the scale again, but still is is using chord tones for B flat major instead, um, instead of G minor, right? So she's using these notes instead, oh, not, not that. So she's using these notes instead of, you know, what's in G minor. And then she transitions back to that. I mean, I like this bridge. It gives it a nice, break as far like i feel like this song is just like super like sexual tensiony and like you know um and i think kind of moving it to the major is like a nice little break before that last chorus she's using articulation more freely she's more legato not as as really short and bouncy as as the rest of the song so that also gives adds to the really the the difference in section and the instrumentation is playing longer notes as well, more legato. It's not as short and staccato and sparse as it was in the previous sections. The only thing that I really have, that I really am bothered by is this last slowdown between the pre-chorus and the chorus. She doesn't say that boy is mine while it's slowing down. And then when it gets into the chorus, only the backing vocals say the, the mine, for that the boy is mine and personally now this is this is obviously up to personal opinion but for me it doesn't hit as hard as the rest of the other two transitions from the pre-chorus to the chorus because it slows down and she doesn't emphasize the word mine with the rest of the 
instrumentation, the rest of the arrangement. So I feel like it, and I know she's doing her ad libs and whatnot, and that's why they, I think they didn't have her say mine with the track, but to me, it feels like it's missing something when she doesn't say mine because it really doesn't emphasize that she's saying the boy is mine. So yeah, I wish they would have had her sing mine still underneath instead of it just being backing vocals because it's it just the mine does not hit as hard and it's not as effective the slowdown is not as effective as it was in the previous two so that that is my only qualm i would say but i mean aside from that though the song is super i i love this song i've been listening to it on repeat since since it's come out and i I think that that little slowdown trans type of transition is super, super cool and effective and, and like very underused in, especially in pop music these days. And I think it's a really cool way to just emphasize certain words and, you know, really show the transitions. Yeah. I mean, and then the last chorus is pretty, you know, about the same as the previous couple choruses. And then it ends with, just saying mine and it's um probably her voice and they just pitched it down so it sounds kind of funny but i think it's a good ending i think it's a good solid ending and overall i i freaking love this song i just have that one qualm of that that pre-chorus into the last chorus and that's about it but i think ariana's really good at articulation and using her head voice versus when she's belting to really give you that energy that that she's trying to display. So this one, I feel like it's supposed to be lighter, breathier, sexier. So I think she uses her head voice a lot more than she really belts because I think she only belts really in the ad libs at the end. So I think she's very she's really really good at it. Just like knowing what technique to use to display. The type of energy or mood that she's trying to get across um which is not easy you know that takes years to really hone in and figure out what what kind of glues together well and sounds really effective so this video is already going to be long as hell so i'm not going to keep going too much but if you stuck around this whole video uh thank you for watching i appreciate it if you liked it please like and subscribe if you like my content i would very much appreciate it and yeah don't forget to drink water i'm gonna probably about to chug a water because i've been talking for a hundred years um <laughs> hopefully i'll be doing a reaction video by the end of this week we will see i'm not sure but we will see i hope you have a good one mm -hmm.